What do you get when a team of chefs tee off for the 100th anniversary of one of Canada's most prestigious sporting events? The answer, a culinary adventure on Chef at Large. Make sure that only goes to the Jack Nicholas feet. Only, 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 only. Get these straight in the fridge, eh, as soon as they're done? Uh, I'm not great. I can eat that whole tray. Eat, yeah, eat <laughs> the Bell Canadian Open is one of the oldest golfing tournaments in the world. It's a major stop on the PGA Tour and draws players like Vijay Singh, Phil Mickelson, and hometown favorite Mike Weir. This year, the 100-year-old tournament will be played at Glen Abbey Golf Course in Oakville, Ontario. On the course, there are 65,000 hungry spectators feeding on everything from gourmet hot dogs to tandoori barbecued quail. As we follow the leaderboard, you can feel the tension on the course and in the kitchen. I think we need to get this on steaming. During tournament week, there are two separate kitchen teams at the club. Rachel, this is Stuart, do you copy? The first, Restaurant Associates, feeds the spectators and caters the corporate tents that line the fairway. Ready for what time? 12 o'clock. 12? The clubhouse team oversees the high-end corporate catering scattered throughout the clubhouse and all the food for the players. We love food, we have a passion for it, and uh, it's always there, it's never stop thinking about food. For Chef Derek Mays and his team, Tournament Week is a big deal. Just the coordination and the magnitude of an event this big, having 80,000 people in their backyard. They've been planning for months, and today they have to do everything to stay out of the rough. And then can you put it in a dry pan and just char it just a little bit? Sure. Yeah. Corporate chef John Curtis oversees Glen Abbey and six other courses. For tournament week, he's jumped in to help Derek and his team out. As he showed me around the clubhouse, it was obvious that the kitchen has big expectations to live up to. So who actually eats in this room? Individual companies that have purchased the table for the Bell Canadian Open Week. Golf is big business and corporate entertaining is a big part of the scene. They've got a good vantage point here of, uh, of 16 fairway and 16 green, so they could watch that fairly comfortably from this area. They can see the grand finale, 18th hole, uh, probably anticipate the sight lines from this room to the 18th green will be a little challenge, so they'll be moving outside pretty fast. These companies pay big bucks for these tables and expect impeccable food and service in return and the full buffet needs to be set bang on 11. 1,400 guests a day will dine in the clubhouse's six dining rooms. They'll enjoy dishes like orange ginger glazed chicken and lobster salad with tarragon lime dressing. From the golf point of view, we can never forget. It's all about the golf, but we like to think in the kitchen it's all about the food. This is the Players' Lounge, named after course architect Jack Nicklaus. It's the eye of the storm, where the players and their families go for a quiet meal away from the crowds. It's also where the champion's reception will be held. So this is kind of the inner sanctum where the players Absolutely. and the major corporate sponsors get to eat up here as well. Limited passes and access to this room for sure. Uh, even, from, even from our staff point of view, we try to control the number of staff that are flowing through this room for obvious reasons. And that really helps to create the atmosphere mm -hmm. that we need in. So there's a bit of a deck out here as well. There is, yes. So Side this is the chef's uh, private box this, here, this right? This would be nice. We should have this one roped off for you, <laughs> for sure. So this is new this year? This is new this year, Michael, yes. It's a uh, skybox and a uh, new addition this year. And any request is we try to accommodate. Fair game. Absolutely. I mean, when you're spending $50,000 for 10 seats, you... You have some pretty high expectations. Yeah, if you want some nuts in a bowl, we'll get it for you, no problem. <laughs> PGA players come from all over the world, so for the winner's reception, the chefs will have to cater to an eclectic range of tastes. Dishes like grilled Asian duck and fried chicken and biscuits help the players feel right at home.
anticipating the past of Prima Vera is going to be a really good seller today. Uh -huh. Right there, just before 11. And that's half the game, is the anticipation. It's just anticipation. knowing. Anticipation, absolutely. And when you're as busy as you are in this kitchen right now, anticipation is half the battle. In other words, when a special request comes through, if you've already anticipated it, you can execute a whole lot faster. As the lead golfers tee off for their final round, the kitchen team is rooting for Canadian Mike Weir. Chef Mays is pulling for the hometown boy and has a special reception planned for him if he wins. It's early in the final round, and Canadian Mike Weir is leading the Bell Canadian Open at Glen Abbey Golf Course. Behind the scenes in the clubhouse kitchen, a harried team of chefs is trying to stay out of the rough. What's, what are you working on here? What's this for? It's for pasta over there. Unless you guys want to put beans in it, because that's what we got. No, that's for the mixed veg. That's no, the we veg. got the, the fajita mix. They'll be feeding both corporate clients and players while planning for the champion's reception. After the putt, yeah. do the same. Winner is determined. That's when the party starts. That's when we need the food here. Chef Derek Mays and his team are on a roll. You can grab us three tablecloths, could you? The clubhouse kitchen is serving 1,500 meals a day. The players, the families, the corporate partners. But what about the 65,000 spectators that are here? How do they eat? In session 12, it's just hot dogs, OK, because it's in the valley. While Chef Mays deals with the clubhouse, it's Stuart Stolarski's job to make sure the hungry hordes of spectators on the course eat well, too. He oversees 700 operations staff for restaurant associates. His staff is scattered all over the course in corporate tents, concession stands, and even a rooftop garden. He's, uh, he's just about to tee off, so yeah. we have to stop the carts. Everybody pauses where they are. The spectators stand still. Everybody takes it easy, and yeah. you just hit. Yeah. Hidden behind the manicured fairways and close-cropped greens is the logistics staging area for the caterers. The clubhouse kitchen is too busy to hold them, so they've carved out their own place here to hide the trailer loads of food they need every day. That's when we bring out our heavy artillery. We'll have pickup trucks that will shuttle bulk food from area to area. We'll utilize uh, you know, industrial strength uh, forklifts or yard tractors. Um, we'll bring refrigerated vehicles um, on the site as far as we can get uh, to each of these areas. And they'll work till two, three in the morning if need be just to get product around. So we got 50,000 plus people out there today. Yeah, huh? yeah. Let me just get the handle. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. In here we've got all of our frozen product from hot dogs, french fries, hamburgers, chicken breasts. It is bulk capacity here to feed the masses. This food here will predominantly feed the concessions as well as support our corporate uh, operation. This is our kitchen. From the docks, all the food is now prepared in this area before it goes out to our uh, corporate suites. Much of this food is prepared off-site, shipped in, and stored. Chef Dennis Kamel oversees the finishing kitchen. So this is a finishing kitchen right here? It is a finishing kitchen. We are doing some hot food production, uh, basically uh, just some fresh pastas and stuff like that. All of our food is coming prepared to us. It's similar to a garmage kitchen. We're just throwing all our platters together. How many meals a day are we pumping out of here? Uh, 1,300. We've all seen buffets because, hey, let's face it, they're a very efficient way of serving a lot of people. But what I like about this buffet is the simple elegance of small platters of food. Instead of gigantic piles and mounds of food, they take a different approach. Nice small amounts that are replenished frequently. That's how to do a classy buffet. To celebrate the centennial, the 100th anniversary of the Bell Canadian Open, we came up with this concept called the Centennial Rooftop Grill, and that's where we are right now. Uh, here, we've got an yeah. upgraded ticket, upgraded style of food really? service uh, for the general public. Nope, there you go. Right. Thank you. 
Pardon me? Yeah, I'm just doing a round of concessions right now. With outlets scattered all over the course, Stewart's a busy guy. How's it going? Wonderful. Yeah? Good How's minute. 15? Very good. OK, yep. good. We had a loose brown Labrador retriever huh. running around earlier today, but RCGA came and got it and, okay. and took it away. It was fine. OK, see you. Thanks. I'll be here. OK, thanks, Colin. Good. How's it going today? Good. Yeah. Did you get some good business? I got it early. Yeah. Good, so. okay. Well, we're going to get it again. Yeah. All right. I'll run two o'clock. OK. Good job, guys. We'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Yep. Thank Bye. you. For, for some reason, I always end up getting the uh, fastest golf course. Back at the clubhouse kitchen, executive chef Derek Mays and executive sous chef Andrew Wall are going over the details for tonight's champion's reception. Okay, Andrew, so let's go over tonight the uh, winner's reception. Don't know who's going to win yet, but it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. We're going to set for 80 to 120 people. Yeah. But before we get into the thick of it, we had to retrieve a few ingredients from a tractor trailer. We've got to pick up some samosas for the receptions tonight. Are you yeah. sure this isn't just an excuse to get out of the kitchen and ride around in golf carts? Right okay, on. And here we are. All right. All right. Five days ago, this freezer was full of the stuffers, right to the top. We couldn't even walk in here. Today, though, it's almost empty. Look what we found in the cooler. Look at this. Malasol caviar. Nothing but the best for PGA champions. The caviar and lobster will be tasty additions to the champions' reception. And with Canadian golfer Mike Weir still in the lead, Chef Mays has a sweet idea. Uh, I got a question for you. We're looking to do a special dessert uh, for tonight. Glen Abbey chef Derek Mays and his team are on the back nine at the Bell Canadian Open. It's just a few hours before the champion is crowned and their reception kicks off. Here's one thing you don't see in every kitchen. A television with a golf match on. With local favorite Mike Weir still leading the field, everyone in the kitchen has their fingers crossed. He's too off the lead. While we left Mike to do his job, we got back to ours. Maybe we should send word out to him that we just ordered all those special desserts. Yeah. All over the kitchen, dozens of different dishes were being prepped for the various buffets, as well as the winner's reception. Chef Andrew Wall was getting ready to sear off fresh lamb loin. This is a loin of uh, Ontario lamb, which we're going to sear, lightly smoke. Uh, I'm going to serve it on a... Uh, an Ace Bakery baguette with a little jalapeno uh, marmalade and then a little drizzle of, uh, of jus. This will be more of a higher end hors d'oeuvre, so it'll be like virtually, we'll make like 10 or 12, maybe 20, 2 you know, at a time, and then, you know, just keep replenishing and replenishing, so sort of keep the, the lamb nice and pink. Vinegar and the root vegetables and the and spices. I jumped in to help poach a whole salmon. Banquet chef Eddie Yamazaki scented the poaching water with bay leaf and other aromatics. How long do you think it'll take? Uh, I believe in 45 minutes to one hour. Then we used heavy cans to hold the fish in a curved shape as it poached. The cucumbers, of course, are the scales of the fish. Looks great. A decorated poached salmon is a regular on the country club circuit. It's a buffet tradition. But Chef Derek Mays is also a fan of new flavors. But it can be a challenge introducing new items onto a traditional clubhouse menu. Uh, changing the, the way that the people look at food, the perception of the golf club is steak, potatoes, heavy sauces, heavy food, lots of sour cream, lots of butter. Um, but slowly but surely, member events, uh, receptions, and tastings. We introduce new dishes slowly but surely, one by one by one. It could be an appetizer or a fish dish or a, a different type of uh, organic vegetables. We didn't use a lot of, uh, of that prior year. And once we got them hooked, there's been no looking back. One of the hors d'oeuvres for the party tonight is mini hamburgers. We're going to take these meatballs, thaw them out, smash them down a little bit, and garnish them. And that's my job. I'm going to put together the lettuce, tomato, onion, relish, cheese garnishes. We'll be good to go. Uh, 
Turn it over. Like a burger. Only 160 to go. While the hamburgers cooked off, I decided to improvise with the condiments and give them a bit of a flavor kick. I'm making a couple of condiments to go along with the burgers. A nice spicy Creole mayonnaise and a chipotle ketchup of sorts. Add a little jazz, some spark to those burgers. This is a chipotle pepper concentrate. So for this to work, I want it to have a nice balance of heat, not too spicy, and lots of smoke flavor. Perfect, really nice. There's some cayenne in there, some thyme, some oregano. I'm really impressed with the team here in the kitchen. It's the craziest, busiest day of the year here, but you'd never know it. There's a lot of people here. It's kind of fun, actually. A nice balance of heat, not too much. Again, I don't want to overwhelm. I just want the flavor. Yeah, here's some tasting spots. Can I little bit of that there? Mm. It's got a little kick to it. There's a little extra there. Yeah. Flavorful. Some lemon juice around. in the back. I really like this one. This is a spicy That's kind of just chipotle ketchup. Chipotle ketchup. Yeah. Lots of smoke. Oh. You should bottle that and sell it. That's awesome. Now, if I do, do I have to pay you royalties? Not at all. Not everything can be prepped and cooked in this kitchen. Specialty items like sushi are outsourced. Oh, with this yeah. kind of volume, you got to outsource yeah, some of it. Yeah, well. Can you serve those with a dipping sauce? Yeah, cilantro yogurt. Oh, okay, so really, really good. Those really nice. Yeah. We've done an international mix of menus because obviously, you know, we've got players here from, you know, at least 20, 30 countries. So you can't just do North American cuisine. So you've got to do a mixed, mixed assortment of everything. So it's a little bit of uh, variety. I'm just going to do some fridge temperature checks. This kitchen is feeding 1,500 people a day right now, so obviously safety is a very important concern. It's like running at minus five. With ingredients stored in every available inch of space, including refrigerated trucks, there's a lot of food flying in and out the doors of the kitchen. So for Glen Abbey's corporate chef, John Curtis, food safety is a high priority. So what, what'd you marinate these in? It's uh, roasted garlic, uh, some thyme, rosemary, and some, put a little Jack Daniels, and, uh, and a little touch of, uh, of liquid smoke. Once the lamb is seared off, it'll be thinly sliced and dressed up with jalapeno marmalade to make a tasty hors d'oeuvre for the champion's reception. So what temperature do we have here? 350. Nice, nice and slow. Okay, and then, uh, Lamb loins don't have a whole lot of fat in them, so if you put them in a very, very hot oven, they tend to shrink up. They tend to get very, very tense. By doing it in a slow oven, 350 degrees, they'll stay nice and even and won't shrink. We're just minutes away from the start of the winner's reception. As the golfers head to the 18th hole, Mike Weir has a one-shot lead. But the world's top-ranked golfer, BJ Singh, is putting on the pressure just as a special dessert ordered by Chef Mays arrives. Less than five hours, four hours. Not bad, eh? Not bad. Get those in the freezer, guys. The champion's reception at the 100th anniversary of the Bell Canadian Open is about to tee off. Right. Okay. okay, one, two, three. Go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me get that table clock back and we can slide it one here. As we wrestle a 200-pound ice sculpture into the Jack Nicholas Lounge, VJ okay. Singh birdies the 18th hole and forces a playoff with Canadian Mike Weir. When you're working with ice sculptures, you gotta pull them out of the freezer early. Let them warm up a bit, literally, because then they go from opaque to clear. As the playoff round began, we knew it would delay the reception, so we slowed down the buffet setup. As we started rolling out the food, the players tied on the first playoff hole. They'll have to play another. And if he gets it, then they gotta do it again? Yeah, then he goes to 17. After he tees off, everyone's gonna get out of this room again. At that point, we gotta start bringing up the food. Yeah. We don't yeah. have to watch time. There's a lot of setup work to be done, but we're all riveted to the action on the TV. 
One more playoff hole. Wow. I can't take this. We have to have this food here in 20 minutes if it's all decided, basically, yeah? Make sure that only goes to the Jack Nicholas Street. Only, 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 only. Uh, I'm not great. I can eat that whole tray. Eat, yeah, eat tomorrow. <laughs> Tell them to garnish the seafood platter with the oysters. Awesome. The McWall burgers. Okay. Do you need the mini burgers? The beef Wellington and the, the pheasant. Attention to detail, guys. Detail. Cool. Okay, I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Yep. Yeah. Well, one good thing, we know we'll be ready. Yeah. Everyone's all jittery now. After the second playoff hole, they tied again. Mike Weir has already had three chances to putt for the win. But this time, his approach shot rolled right in the water. All VJ Singh has to do is three putt for the win. He's still number one in Canada. Yeah. Okay, but back to work. Back to work. Back to reality. All right, guys. Oh, Let's so close. Uh, get. But uh, we still got to feed the crowd. There's a lot more high end, a lot more detail, attention to cooking, focus, service, and whining and dining, and really bringing the level up from uh, where it was in the past, being such an important anniversary date. In the kitchen, the staff quietly went back to work. We all knew that the champion's reception would now be a bit subdued, but the food went out on time and looked and tasted great. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, it's, it was a good week, fun week. Fun week yeah. and uh, a lot of planning. Fantastic, emulated. Pinnacle point in my career. While disappointment hung heavy over the golf course, I heard more than one person say, Mike Weir may have lost, but he lost to the best golfer on the planet. From the Bell Canadian Open at the Glen Abbey Golf Course, I'm Michael Smith, your chef at large.